Greetings, users and programs. This is Itari Living Sacrifice touring you through the inside of Jozer's Jozer's Pyramid Step Pyramid. Learn about Jozer's Step Pyramid and Imhotep's influence on the evolution of the pyramid architecture. Please Welcome keep your hands and inside arms inside Jozer's the vehicle Step pyramid. at all times. Pull out a. We'll use our. Whoa, I didn't switch to that. The architect of the Step Pyramid, Imhotep, was a man of great importance to Pharaoh Djoser and ancient Egyptians in general. The base of a statue of Djoser, discovered in 1926, celebrates Imhotep as a carpenter, sculptor, stonemaker, and chief of the seers. Little is known of Imhotep's day-to-day -day life. While he is credited for writing medical texts, it is for his role of architect that he is most famously known. Gonna burn all the... Oh, we can't burn. Aw. Oh, can't get rid of the cobwebs. From the design of the pyramid to the elements within the complex itself, Imhotep set out to create something that would immortalize his king. An architectural achievement, the step pyramid was made from stone blocks instead of mud brick. Mm. It was the first time Egyptians built a monument of that height. Imhotep explicitly intended for the stone to reflect natural materials. The funerary complex of Djoza remained famous throughout the centuries and millennia, and its great architect, Imhotep, was deified by ancient Egyptians during the late period. What are they doing to it? Are they trying to restore it? Can't restore the pyramid. Then it won't be the original pyramid. I guess they... I guess they should try. You should at least try, huh? What's over here? Oh, let's back out. They don't want us to go there. Whoosh. In addition to the central subterranean palace built for Djoser, 11 wells were dug. Each went to a depth of 33 meters and connected with a horizontal gallery extending for about 20 meters. The first five galleries were intended for members of the royal family. Lower passage, large apartment. It's a very large apartment going down. Whoa! Hey! Oh! Oh! I don't think they want us to go here. Oh, there's a silica! Let me pick up the silica! Maybe not. Vault? They have a vault in here! The unknown vault. Two passages lead underground and branch off in three directions to various magazine galleries. This vast underground space accommodated sections for storage and ceremonial offerings. One of the tunnels, starting on the east side of the pyramid, contained 40,000 stone vessels, many of them belonging to the king's ancestors. Vessels of bodies? Like, what? Those vessels? Uh... The burial chamber of Djoser is located at the bottom of a 28-meter deep central shaft. According to Egyptologist Jean-Philippe Lauer, the chamber was originally made from polished blocks of limestone, while its ceiling was decorated in five-pointed stars. At some point, however, the limestone blocks were replaced entirely by pink granite blocks, leaving behind only fragments of limestone blocks decorated with stars. Oh, that's too bad. So there's an actual body inside this pyramid. Entrance to the lower passages, small apartment. Those are the stars, huh? No, those are not the stars. 
What are those? Oh, we can't climb in this mode? That's weird. They let us climb everywhere else. At the foot of the chamber are many tunnels going in all directions. This maze of tunnels, galleries, and chambers stretches over five kilometers. There are a number of dead ends and false doors. They may have been intended for the afterlife rather than to fool thieves. Why would he want false doors in his afterlife? Unlike the Great Pyramid of Giza or Menkara, the Pyramid of Djoser does not have any extra openings dug out by thieves. There was no need for them. Because of the easy access into the tunnels and along the corridors, thieves had little trouble clearing out the temples once inside. It is unknown when the mummy of Djoser was stolen. All that remained was a left foot, found by French Egyptologist Jean-Philippe Lauer in 1934. This architect, who devoted his whole life to meticulously exploring the complex, believed it belonged to Djoser. Hmm. Why would they leave the foot, though? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Ah, that annoys me. They won't let me climb. The Pharaoh's Apartments, also known as the Blue Chambers, are decorated with blue-green tiles meant to imitate the reed matting that covered the walls and windows of his palace. The stone is carefully curved and painted to look like the rolled mats of open doorways and curtains. There are two long rooms running side by side along a north-south axis. The south room has false doors separated by stone panels while the north room is a corridor which allows access to side chambers. Nearby chambers originally housed the Pharaoh's treasures. Oh, those are the stars, I think. See, this is pretty cool because this is, most people will never get a chance to go inside the pyramid, so this is the closest a lot of us will ever get. Hello. Where did they find those bodies then? chest cavities. The door frames are made of fine limestone and carved with the king's name. As in the south tomb, reliefs are carved into the doorways. These reliefs show the king performing rituals and visiting divine sanctuaries for all eternity. Their interiors are fictive additions made by the team to add to the wonders of the tomb. It is clear from the elaborate detail and scale of the complex that this funerary monument was a technological marvel of its time. They're not going to translate them for us, huh? What is that? That's what I want to know. What is all this stuff? Neferu's first pyramid. So, thank you for joining us on our tour of jo inside of Joser's pyramid. The next one on the next episode, we're going to do Sneferu. And thank you for joining us. And remember to keep moving forward. <laughs>